Let's go. Well, Tim, before we get started, I'd like to talk about uh, Joe Warmington had it in the paper, and, and it was Christmas, and I think it was Hanukkah, the people, but it was called Baby Leon, and uh, L-I-A-M, Liam, that's an Irish name, and uh, Constable Ivan Young, and the little baby uh, was not breathing, it was blue, and Ivan Young, uh, the police academy, had just you know, nine months before, he could remember the uh, the police. I mean, just use your two little fingers if it's a baby, and uh, brought his life back, saved his life, and uh, I just thought it was, I I I just thought that was wonderful. Uh, Constable Ivan Young, even Ivan, I don't understand <laughs> Ivan, but it was a great. Uh, Ivan did a great job, and um, yeah, you don't hear about too much about no. good stories about the police. So no. And, and I was just uh, thrilled about it. And uh, Joe Gatlin was on uh, Fox, and I watch Fox all the time. And uh, and he 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 said what he said what I what everybody I think everybody well everybody that I know thinks that uh, if if that um, who 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 do you phone? It was the same thing as that person that threw the paint all over the fallen officers. I, I never I just I just can't believe that if that person was in trouble. If somebody was breaking in their house or their apartment or whatever they live, and who would they phone? They would phone the police. Yeah, just in case people like outside of Toronto don't know, there's a, like a little memorial for all the fallen police it's big, officers. It's big, yeah. And it's really big. It's it's uh, And it really means a lot, a lot to them. Yeah, and uh, some uh, somebody, I guess it's a woman, uh, threw red paint all over it. And, 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 she, and it's like desecrating a grave, really. Well, and, and you know, they really think a lot of that. I've been to them, and... Uh, they they really well why wouldn't they uh, fallen officers all the and she did a pretty good job or I don't know who did it but uh, yeah and then as you say you know the first people they call when everybody's in trouble well you've seen that a lot the people who, who are uh, the people in the, the states who are calling for to fund the police when something happens that's, that's the Joe first thing the first thing they call is the police Joe Gatlin was uh, the Gatlin brothers he was on boy and he that's what he said you wouldn't phone the people that are wrecking everything down there and everything. That you'd phone the police, yeah. and they never get any credit. But I thought Joe Warming did did a great write up like that, uh, praise, praising the police. But I mean, nobody ever read it, and uh, and and the person that threw that uh, paint all over, they'll they'll just get a little slap on the wrist and, and yeah. see you later, and and, yeah. and don't do it again, and and the whole deal. But boy, I tell you, uh, I, I I think so much the uh, the constables. Well, there's Ivan Young saved that kid's life. And uh, and and it had to be Joel Warmington that. that did yeah, because it. if it wasn't for Joel, it probably wouldn't. It would have been wouldn't a little he? two two lines in the paper. Yeah. Anyhow, it did a great job, and I uh, want to get the and now we're and tell Tim tell us about what um, about uh, we did pretty good yesterday. We we had uh, you, what was their bet? Oh yes, yeah, so we just we want to mention our sponsor, Spreads.ca. It's a First Nation owned Canadian online casino and sports, and it's tailored toward Canadians and. Yes, you can bet on the World Juniors, and you sign up now and enter promo code GRAPES, and they'll match your deposit up to $500. You get 15 spins for some big dough, and you get uh, your first bet. They give you a $25 uh, uh, bonus to bet. So we took Canada. You had to give seven and a half goals. I'm thinking, seven and a half goals. <laughs> yeah, man, I come over to watch it with you, and I said, seven and a half goals. Yeah, I... Uh, he still didn't win anything. They could think we, you, you won 10 cents on a dollar or something yeah. like that. But uh, a lot of people were on Twitter, Dad. They were saying, are the hockey gods going to be mad? Yes. Don't, I, I, I don't know what the coach could have done because the kids all want to score. What are you going to do, bench them? You can't bench them. But if I was... If I, if I'd have to say when I was coaching the Boston Bruins that... Uh, by the way, the can I jump in? I jump in. Yes, I I don't think they'd be too happy. Uh, running the only the only good thing that you mentioned about was they did even after the first goal they didn't jump around. No, they did. They just knew they knew what was going on. And the kids, our our kids, and I want them to win so bad. I get so nervous. But, uh, but you were talking. Uh, you you were talking about Larry Onoff. He only he rolls the lines, eh? Yeah, he's the you know you the were saying guy. yeah you were saying there's one you know you think Canada's going to win and you're hoping but you said there's one team that kind of scares you. The Russians are big. They use long sticks. I know that's, that's hard. I know you, it doesn't mean it. And they use big blades. 
and they played the rush the, the Americans and it was like it was like they were they were pros playing a bunch of kids and the kids uh, the United Americans can really skate don't get me wrong and they, but God, the Russians look pretty good and, and yeah. uh, Larry Yanov coaches the way he wanted to be coached yeah, he said he learned a lot from Scotty Bowman, well, and, and uh, he he does, he's the one thing he said that I know that you 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 agree with. He said when he was playing, he hated uh, when coaches would match lines, so he just rolled four lines against the Americans. Honest to God, this is a true story. That when I coached, when I, we were coaching the uh, prospect game, and you're supposed to make all the stars look good, and one guy was matching lines. He wanted. I remember Spezzo. He was. Uh, I think it was Spets or anyhow, it was one of our stars. He had a guy checking him, so he looked bad. I mean, and so I had to go to the guy, and the guy, he really, like, we were supposed to make all of everybody look good. And, uh, but Larry Onoff, he, and um, he, he was assistant coach last year. He was eh? assistant coach last year, and the Russians have uh, the, the guy that he's taken over for, coached him for six years. That, that Russian goalie, he scares me. I mean, he's big, he comes out. Uh, yeah, you dumped the puck in wrong. It's coming right back out. And, and you know, he let in that goal from the point. Uh, it was by accident it went in. And you see right after, he, he, uh, no, he, he when he did the sp- splits, he, yeah. his whole pads covered the whole net at the bottom. And he, he really scares me. I don't think they're going to get many goals against him. The Russians are big, really big. And uh, they, their sticks are long. I know that that doesn't mean much to many people, and they have big blades, and most of them, I'd say most of them, not all of them, have black tape on, and their blades look pretty big. I know this sounds ridiculous, but uh, well, I, I'm I'm betting Canada Russia in the finals, and uh, I hope can I think Canada will win, but you know it's oh, I that, don't know, boy, that goalie's that goalie's something. Yeah, and so. We're gonna we're gonna do Bobby Orr. We're just just you and I here today. Yep, Cindy and Dell are taking a little vacation uh, for the holidays, and uh, just want to remind everybody that we were voted the b- biggest uh, Apple podcast. We were voted that was really something the best and of twenty twenty for the biggest. Uh, tw- who who did that? That was Apple. The people at Apple. No, but I mean, who? Oh, and I see that. That's how we got it. We got the framed. Uh, Thing that was pretty good. I yeah, they gave the, us a little plaque or like a little uh, uh, thing that uh, uh, my what's wife. What's it say on their best of the year? Uh, best. best of the best of 2020, and we got that plaque. And you know, a lot of people ask me, "What did I get? What do you get, Don Cherry, for Christmas?" And what uh, Cindy and I and Ling and Grace and Dell got you was oh yeah a nice photo of you dropping the puck uh, Boy, at sure. the Boston Gardens. Uh, with all your 20 goal scores, with the two captains. 11, cap- yeah. 11 20 goal scores. The one guy wasn't there was Cashman. And uh, they, the two captains were uh, uh, color, uh, with uh, the Flames, was uh, Giordano, yeah. and then the other one was Zidato oh, Chara. So Chara, they were, we were just, I was just going to drop the puck, and Chara said, for Boston Bruins, he said, no, I want a pitcher to you know, put on the wall. So uh, Giordano goes to the one side, and... <laughs> He is a monster. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he's. Be, be, I think he's about six foot seven, and then he gets the skates on. He's about seven feet tall. Yeah, you guys look like little hobbits next to him. We, we, like we. I mean, he. I mean, we really did look ridiculous. Boy, is he a monster, eh? Yeah, but it's a great picture. You got all the, yeah, all and, the guys, but Cash and, and everybody. So so what we're going to decide to do, because Cindy and Dell are taking a little bit of a break, we're going to run a great fine show of one of your favorites, uh, one of the favorite shows of Bobby Orr back in the... Mid-90s. Yeah, he starts off, it, it starts off, he, I'm doing all the talking because he's he's very shy, eh? Bobby is very shy. Remember remember at the, at the deal, he was... Um, I mean, there, there was a collector there at the deal. Uh, yeah, well, the, that was. Uh, uh, I think I get. I guess he was the second get. Like, and and you'll hear you talking to somebody at the start, and you can't quite hear it because the crowd is loud. But Gump Worsley was the show. Oh, that, he was that, funny. And Gump sitting at the bar, and, and you talked to Gump a little bit before you introduced Bobby. That's, that's Gump Worsley. I, they talking. Both, the vo- their voices sound the same, though. Yeah, they do. I mean, I didn't know who I was talking to at the start. I forget. And, and but but what happened was between the shows, like normally what we did for the Grapevine shows, we had two shows a night, yeah. and then you know after the first show we take a little bit of a break, and all the all the all the guests were really good kids. about. Yeah, there was a lot of kids there. Yeah, we're signing autographs and taking pictures, and Bobby was doing it, and Gump was doing it, and then you had a guy who was a collector. He was and, a collector, and he ruined everything. And Bobby, 
Yeah, oh, when did he get, <laughs> he used to get mad. I didn't know what he was mad at. And uh, he told me, I, I, I was told by somebody there that uh, the guy had come up to him. And he said, no, I'm not signing. He has a sixth sense. <clears throat> well, you can tell the guys, they're sort of sleazy guys. They get his autograph and then they sell it. And I tell you one time, I took a picture uh, in Vancouver and he says, well, put on this Vancouver hat. And it was like a big whale at the thing. He says, you're not going to sell it. He says, no. He says, I wouldn't sell it. It was on sale on email before he even got back to Toronto. <laughs> yeah. And, and it really bugs you when the guy says, so this guy give uh, the kids, he sp- give the kids $5 to get his autograph. And Bobby's, as he's signing, he's watching this guy. Boy, he was t- ticked off, wasn't he? Yeah. So that we'll we'll run the uh, Grapevine show with Bobby Orr and uh, Gump Worsley, and and uh, and he answers a trivia question: Who was Bobby Orr's? Uh, who scored? Uh, but what goal he did Bobby score his first goal on? So we'll we'll he talk, I, talk, well, talk, talk about yeah, that. It had to be Gump. So I think it was Gump. Yeah, it was Gump. And that's what Gump says. He's well, well. Gump says everybody scored their first goal on me. So this is the uh, Grapevine but, show with uh, Bobby Orr and Gump Worsley. This week in the Great Fight, we got the greatest hockey player in the world, Bobby Orr. Let's go! (laughs) Hall of Famer, Rookie of the Year, Stanley Cup winner, four of them, uh, Vesna Trophy winner, Cup Worsley, right there! You still don't know what to do with him, eh? This is the one. Only that end. Listen, how many did Bobby score against you? Too many. <laughs> no, how many really? Did he? Probably 20 or 30. Yeah. This is the one. Look how he did it like there in the end of that. I know I shouldn't be doing that. But see how he did it in the end? Guys like that. Look, it's, 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 beauty. That's really important to a hockey player. Why not? The other end is the important end. This end, when you hold on to it, how'd a dumb goalie know? Because that's where the other end, where the puck comes from. Oh, all right. I'm not going to argue with you. Hall of Famer. I was never a Hall of Famer. I'm going to put that right up here. Now, listen. I'm going to tell you a story about Bobby Orr. Everybody asks me, who's the greatest hockey player? I've never asked you that. I'm afraid to ask you. I'm not going to tell you. Oh, all right. That's good. (laughs) 128 plus 128. Let me just say plus 128 in one year, 1974-75. When last year, I think the guy that won it was plus 50. 46 goals, 83 assists. I remember I used to give the players heck all the time in the dressing room. Imagine me Gump giving them heck. One day he comes to me and says, uh, Don, when you're giving them heck, do you think you can give me heck too? <laughs> you weren't brave enough to do it, eh? Yeah, geez, I, re- I-, I was in LA. I said, Bobby. For heaven's sakes, take the man, take the man, take the man. That's the only thing I could think of was take the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he was coming down, there was a guy coming down like this. is a true story. Guy coming down on him like this and everything like that. And, and uh, so he takes a guy like that. He looks over to the bench and goes, Take the man, Don. The game is on. That's unbelievable. It was unbelievable how the young players loved him in the... In the uh, uh, league. I remember one time I was in Washington. I'm watching this. This is the God's truth. In Washington, uh, the centerman Washington says to the rookie, go over here, stand here. And he looks over Bobby. I'm at the blue line. Bobby went over there. Guy moves! <laughs> <laughs> and the puck came to him. Respect. I know. He used to something. We've got a blue movie. I, if you ever hear this guy that, that, that's the greatest hockey player in the world, Gump, I think he's the greatest hockey player in the world. Red Fisher does, and you like Red Fisher. Sure I do. (laughs) We go right now to a blue movie roll that blue movie on Bobby Yowa. Blue's movie is brought to you by Gaines Pet Food. Blue's choice is always top choice. There is a saying in hockey. First there are players, then there are stars, then there are superstars, and then there's Bobby Orr. It all started for the Perry Sound native in 1966. He was drafted first overall from the Oshawa Generals by the lowly Boston Bruins. In his first year, he would make his mark by winning the Rookie of the Year award, truly a sign of things to come. In his next 10 years with the Bruins, Orr would rewrite the record book. The Bruins players called him Moses because he led them out of the basement of the NHL to the promised land of the top in only four short years. It's true that Orr dominated the game at that time, but he did a lot more. 
he revolutionized the game. When Orr broke into the NHL, defensemen were supposed to stay at home. That all changed. Not only was he a great offensive threat, some might say that he was the offensive threat at that time. He would be the first and so far last defenseman to lead the NHL in scoring. His first time was in 1970, and then five years later he did it again in 1975. Along with the two Art Ross trophies, Orr would win a lot more hardware. In his career, he would win a couple of Stanley Cups, three consecutive Hart trophies for the league MVP, and eight consecutive Norris trophies as the best defenseman in the NHL. One of Bobby's last hurrahs was in 1976, when he led a powerful Team Canada to a win in the first Canada Cup. It was the first international event that he would play in. Fans were deprived of seeing him play in the 72 series because of bad knees. With the Canada Cup to add to his many trophies, Bobby Orr would be in the twilight of his career. After contract problems with the Bruins, Orr ended up signing with the Chicago Blackhawks, where he would retire in 1979 as a result of his infamous knee problems. He is the greatest player of all time. Number four, Bobby Orr. Well, I have to say, I taught the kid everything he knows, right? Did you ever score against Goop over here? Uh, I think I scored my first goal in the National Hockey League against Goop. I told you that. Everybody else did. <laughs> he did, too. I said, I said, Bobby ever scored against He probably scored his first one. Everybody I else really did. did. All right, we're going to start right off. As if, if the people are in a mind that don't know, but we're going to say, where were you born and raised? Perry Sound, which is 140 miles north of Toronto. Yeah. And your, your grandfather, uh, you come, your blood is, runs with the professional. Tell us about it's, your grandfather. My grandfather was a professional soccer player in Northern Ireland, Bellamina. What is it? Uh, Bellamina in the north. I like that. Oh, the I north. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. Won't go in any more than that. Uh, <laughs> and your dad. Yeah, Let me my, tell you about your dad. My, my, my dad tells me he was a pretty good hockey player. Um, when he was 16, he was invited, to, uh, uh, I believe, to two camps, the, the Leaf Camp and the Bruin Camp. And he joined the Navy instead and came home from the Navy and uh, too, too was married. Yeah. And uh, served in the North Atlantic. And served in the North the Atlantic. The Corvette. Yes. My type of guy. And then I found out that he uh, worked in the munitions. Uh, worked in CIL uh, for 25 years. Uh, worked very hard. Uh, not only at CIL, but uh, he worked many other jobs Jeez, at the Logan. same time. And yeah, now, when did he start to skate? I think I started skating when I was three, three and a half, maybe four, uh, on a rink, uh, the side did of the house, side of our home. Did he ever put, did he push you like he did? No, he? no, I, I was never pushed on, uh, uh, you know, they made sure I had equipment and drove me to the games and, and so on, but I was never, never pushed to play. I was, I was never told, hey, you're going to be a hockey player, and, and that's it. Uh, I had fun, I enjoyed it, and uh, no, never any pressure. How long, like, when did you start in the morning? How long would you go? Doug said well, you used to skate all by yourself under the moon. <laughs> we skated a lot, uh, but we did most of our skating. We had a, a very large minor hockey organization at Perry Sound. We had to wait our turn to get inside, so we really did most of our skating outdoors, uh, on the bay, uh, the school rink, uh, parking lots, uh, and. Uh, on weekends, we would play from morning till night, and that's really where we learned all our skills. Uh, Do you ever our, without adults, just 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 go dropping the puck Do and, and go. You know, you know what bothers me, Bobby. Uh, when I go to uh, now, I'm, God love them. I'm not knocking the, the coaches now. They get up at five in the morning. They say, "Why don't you get up at five in the morning?" But what bothers me is when I when I go there and I hear the coaches saying, "Pass it, pass it," and you know the kid takes two steps, pass it. I mean, if you had done that, you'd have never made the National Hockey League. Well, we really. Uh, as I said, we, we really learned our skills just with you know, 10 or 15 players in each team, drop the puck and, and go. And that's how we learned to skate and that's how we learned to handle the puck. And, and I don't see much of that anymore. And I, I think the kids, is in, in many cases, we mu would be much better off if they went out on their own. Uh, they don't have to wait for the adults to organize it. Just go out and play. Uh, I don't see Sandlot baseball much okay. anymore, and, you know, just a group of kids getting together, and you don't see kids often playing on the street, mm -hmm. and uh, Road that's how we, that's, what, that's where we learned our skills. Do you any have any drills or anything you did, anything you different no, than anybody? I mean, I, I'm not sure I could play today. I keep hearing about all these systems, but, uh, you know, we, we learned the fundamentals, uh, skating, uh, shooting, puck handling, passing, the fundamentals of the game, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, a youngster, I mean, what does he understand about, yeah. uh, I mean, there comes a time when he's old enough and can understand yeah. the systems and so on, but I, uh, I think, at the, for the young ones at least, uh, you know, Remember the used systems to hollow, are unbelievable. used to hollow out a puck and fill it full of lead? That's how I practiced, uh, shoot off a piece of plywood and uh, I would set another piece of plywood up and have targets on how it. How long? 
oh, I would do that for hours. And, uh, well, there you I are, kids. <laughs> uh, dig out a puck and put lead in it to make it a little heavier and a little more difficult to shoot. And I remember in the Boston Brew and Dressing Room, you used to walk around with a uh, first and only guy you ever see with a weighted stick. Well, I like, you know, light stick. I, I didn't use a heavy stick. I felt like control the light stick a lot, uh, a lot better, and uh, uh, I just liked it that way. I had a very small knob, and, and uh, well, I remember Eddie uh, Gumper will remember when I was in Springfield. Him and I are in Springfield. I remember Eddie Shore. He says, "You know, Cherry." He says, "Most players, when they have, it's like a scientific tool. In your hands, it's a blunt <laughs> instrument." <laughs> Okay, uh, you were 11 years old, you were 5 foot 2, 110 pounds, and everybody was telling you you were too small. This is for all the small kids out well, there. I think hockey is one of the, one of the games that the, the little guy can play. Uh, Stan Makita, Dave Keon, and many others. Savard. Uh, Savard. Uh, you know, you have to have some heart, and you, if you get knocked down, you have to get up. Flurry. But, uh, flurry. I mean, I, hockey is one of the few games a little man can play. And, uh, so for the young hockey players, players out there to think they're too small, that's, that's not true. You can play this game. If you have some heart and you love the game and want to learn how to play the game, you know, you can play you can this game. Yeah. Bucko McDonald, he's the guy that puts you on the road. Bucko was a, a gentleman that you know, played to Toronto, Detroit, and he uh, was in Perry Sound, coached the minor hockey teams in Perry Sound. Uh, and Bucko was a great coach. Uh, he philosophy was teach the fundamentals and make sure the kids have fun. If they're having fun, they're going to continue to play the game. If, if they're playing, we can teach them so much. And that was his philosophy. And uh, we had a great time with Bucko. Uh, I think Bucko's a guy that, that, that put me on defense. And Yeah, uh, your often, dad wanted you to uh, play forward, eh? He did. Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know why Bucko wanted me to play defense, but that's where he thought I should play. Worked and, out uh, all right. Now <laughs> that was all right. Yeah. <laughs> Faithful day in Gananoque. Tell us about what happened in Gananoque? Well, the, the, the scouts don't, you know, at that time didn't get up to Perry Sound. I don't think they do either. No, no, no. So, you know, we, uh, and at that time, the NHL teams owned the junior teams, and uh, they would go around and recruit young players to, to play on their junior teams, and Oshawa was starting that year, and uh, they needed players for Oshawa, and uh, Boston also owned Niagara Falls, so they had two teams. Yeah. And uh, they went to Gananoque to, to scout two players, and we were pl playing there in, you remember in the playoff names? game. Uh, Tim, uh, Tim Higgins and Ricky Eaton. Yeah. And, uh, uh, they Did both, they ever go anywhere? They, they played junior hockey. Oh, yes. Yeah. But they were there scouting uh, uh, both those players, and we were playing them in the playoffs. And uh, uh, Bolly Cotton was there, Ren yeah. Blair, uh, Mr. Adams was yeah. there, and Mel Schmidt Mitch, Mel was Schmidt. scouting the other two players. And there you were. Twelve years old, I guess, eh? I was thirteen, I Thir think. I was, thir I was thirteen. They, they couldn't believe it. Ren Blair used to live at your house trying to get you there, eh? <laughs> Well, at that time, we would sign what we call a C-form. C-form. They don't have that no, anymore. They don't have that anymore. We, Slavery. <laughs> uh, they don't have a draft as it is today, or they didn't have a draft as it is today. So once you signed that C-form, you were owned by that uh, yeah. club until they traded you or sold you or released you. Now you went to Oshawa play junior at 127 pounds. That's yes. ought to be, that ought to uh, be fun. It was fun. Uh, uh, my first training camp, junior training camp, was in Niagara Falls. And Niagara Falls and Oshawa trained together. And I can still remember the, uh, uh, the lineup that you'd give your name and your weight and your position. And you know, Bob, you are 120 defense. And everybody laughed. <laughs> well, that was a big joke, eh? Your mom, Arva, she did not want you to go away. No. She, uh, you know, she thought I was a little young, but uh, after meeting the, the folks I would be living with, uh, she was a little more comfortable about it. But, yeah. uh, it was difficult. Uh, I don't know if any of your people have ever been homesick, but yeah. I can tell you I was homesick well, my I, first year away. I, I, I remember talking to your sister, Pat, that uh, every time you phone, you'd be crying. The whole family would be blubbering on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I was allowed to call home uh, once or twice a week. and. I would go up the street to a pay phone because they didn't want anyone to, to see me crying or hear me crying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, now you had to drive back and forth to Oshawa. My first year, I commuted, yeah. and, but most of our games were on the weekend, so uh, yeah. uh, it was had, had to borrow a car. I had a lot of great friends. Uh, uh, for a time, we didn't have a car, so we had a lot of great friends that would drive us down, Bob Holmes and, and uh, other folks from... from and he had to get up for work. And he'd get up for work. But as I say, most of our well, games were Friday, Saturday, yeah. or Sunday afternoon, so it made it a lot easier. And, we, and you didn't practice? You couldn't practice? No, I skated in Paris, so. Yeah. Uh, I liked your trainer, uh, Stan, Stan Whalen. Whalen. That was really funny. He, he used to give you heck all the time about not putting tape on your stick. Why? What, well, like, what happens? Well, I, I, I thought it was just made the stick too heavy, Don. Yeah. <laughs> Manufacturers were like... I, I would put one strand on it because it's, 
I thought you had to have something on. What was the law? Yeah, well, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> so the tape manufacturers didn't like me, but the stick manufacturers loved me. So then you got into the weights. Get into the weights. I, I wasn't very big when I went to Oshawa, and uh, a gentleman by the name of Dunk Brody uh, uh, was, was asked to take me to his basement and put some uh, weight on me, so I would go down there with a couple of the other players to try to bulk up You don't up a believe bit. in weights, though, do you? I, I, I think you can lift weights and be strong. And, and and not bulk. I, yeah. I, I think uh, so many of the players today. Scott are, Pearson are just, did that. He they, bulking a little too much. Yeah, he bulked up. You just don't move right. Yeah. And uh, I think you can be strong without bulking up. Yeah. So no, I, I don't agree with too much weight lift. Memorial Cup. I remember when I, I remember my brother phoned him tell him. Oh, by the way, my brother, I want to. That's hockey right there, Gumper. That's hockey. We've got a pitcher, and I, I'm springing on blue this year. This pitcher. I don't even remember. Now you name these guys, okay? On the right, Teddy Hodgson. And then on the other side of me, Ross Lonsbury. Uh, that next guy, I believe his name is Cherry. That's right. Cherry, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's Don's brother, Dick. Uh, Wayne Connolly and uh, Joey Watson. My brother's a principal now. I, I got all the looks, he got all the brains. But anyhow, that's a, <laughs> that's a good picture, anyhow. Um, and he phoned me, he says, you won't believe this kid. I says, but anyhow, he told me about the Memorial Cup now. You were going to the Memorial Cup. Talk about pressure. I remember the headlines was, uh, uh, see the million dollar player, Bobby Orr. See Orr for the last time. So you can relate with this Lindris kid about now. Well, I, uh, pressure, I mean, I was, I, was, I was playing a game that I dreamt about playing and, and I knew after, you know, in September, I was going to uh, have an opportunity to go to the Bruin camp. You know, it was a dream. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I was doing something I loved to do. So yeah. I really didn't didn't bother didn't you at feel all. Feel eh? pressure no at all. No pressure done. at all. I, eh? You know, I, I wanted to go out and, and, and play well and so on. But uh, I really didn't think about it. I was doing something I, I loved to do, and, mm -hmm. and uh, that's really all I thought about. First guy to make the big dough in the National Hockey League. Uh, that was something. I'll tell you. How much well, you making? But you remember, first year. <laughs> Compared to what they're getting today, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was a big deal back much. then. I think my salary at that time was thirty-five or forty thousand, and for a rookie at that yeah. time, it was. It, it Scott was Stevens says, "How much now?" <laughs> yeah, just yeah. out of the pocket. But you were like the Scott Stevens back then because of everybody salaries well, took right off. Well, it, it took a little longer. I mean, yeah. it, it started then, but uh, a few more years before it really the salaries really started to escalate. But hey, uh, that's the sign of the times, and you know today's player. You know, players, good luck to them. Uh, it does not bother me to see the players making the big money. What, what bothers me is when you know a player that's making big money and you go to see him play and he disappoints yeah. you. And, and that happens quite a bit. Yeah, uh, you, know, you players, don't mind paying the dough. You know, you don't mind making that kind of money, but darn it, you know, perform. And, you know, the Gretzky's and the Eisenman's, those guys don't, they don't disappoint you. Not they often come. anyway. They, they come to play every night. And, and Lemieux does now, too. How do the players receive you now? You're the guy coming in and, uh, I mean, how did they treat you? Player, oh, the player's wonderful. I, yeah. I, I don't have a problem with the players. Uh, Did uh, they go in that hazing, uh, what do they call it? Uh, forget what oh, they Oh, you mean back when I went to tra yeah. training? Oh, gosh, uh, with the Bruins. Oh, I can remember the first camp like it was yesterday. I, I, we were training in London, London, Ontario, and I, I walked into my room and there was a gentleman laying on the bed, and just in his shorts and a little tummy on him. It looked like Buddha and smoking a cigar. And <laughs> I looked and I recognized him. I said, oh. Oh, Mr. Busick, he says, you call me chief. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How about, tell about the time, we got to go now. Tell us quickly about the time Espo wrecked his knee. Remember that? And, well, and we went up in the hospital. We, get, we, we, thought, we, we thought it was funny then, but yeah. not so funny, Don. Yeah. But uh, Phil, uh, during the playoffs, Phil was injured, had a knee operation. Uh, he was in traction. We went into the hospital, and, and uh, uh, we, we set the weights up on the bed so his leg would stay in the traction properly, covering him up. and wheeled him out of the hospital. Uh, down to the bar? Down the street, found a door big enough to get the bed through, and wheeled him down the street into a, a bar for cheese and crackers. And <laughs> you know, I, t I thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I asked Phil if that was true. He says, yeah, they thought it was very funny, only I got a $400 bill after it was a <laughs> Put it there, Bobby Boy, we're going over the bar. Time. 
15 minutes before the game. I tried to find him. Finally, I found him in the shower after about the 30th game. He used to sign about 30 sticks for the visiting team. All right. How come? How come? And I used to get mad. That's never mind those. I can't say what I said. How come he only won two cups, Stanley Cups in Boston? Well, I, I, I agree with what a lot of people have said. We, uh, we should have won more. Uh, I think we'd be, uh, we came undisciplined. And I don't care how much talent you have. Uh, you've got to be disciplined. You've, you've got to you know, pay the price, make the sacrifices, and so on. And uh, I think we just became undisciplined and uh, you know, only won two, should have won more. Tom Blake said the greatest hockey team ever assembled ever was the 76 Canada Cup. Do you agree? It's pretty good. Four. It was a pretty good team, yes. Pot fans, Savard, Lapointe, you, Robinson, not bad. It was a, a very good hockey team. Um, uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, and th that team could play, yes. Boy, we had a lot of fun with the Boston Bruins, didn't we? Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, we were pretty disciplined. You know, I want to talk about your skate-a-thon. Uh, uh, how, how long has it been going now? This is our 10th year, uh, which is very exciting for us. And to this point, uh, we've raised uh, a million and a half dollars for, for Easter Seals. And December 16th will be our next skate, and uh, we welcome everyone down. Where, where is it? Maple Leaf Gardens, noon hour to 3. But tell them where we're going to be before that. Well, f on the Friday night, that's on the Sunday the 16th. Yeah. On, the, on the 14th, we're up in Perry Sound. Perry Sound. Uh, and Perry. where are the rest of them now? You got, I know. Uh, we're in Vancouver, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope to, to, to get into Calgary, Edmonton. We, used, we hope to start uh, uh, branching out and having the skate skate thons right across Canada. You were telling me that you think your knee feels better now I, than it I, ever has. I was really concerned about the knee, and I had surgery in May and June. Middle of August, I thought I had to go back in, and then all of a sudden it started to come around, and I don't think it's felt better in 10 years. Well, maybe you'll make a comeback. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now tell us, when you were growing up, who was your hero? Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe? And, I, Don, and Don Cherry. I'm yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, I got to tell you. Gump knows, I would, Gump and I were talking before that I, when I have Bobby on, and I never tell all the stories and everything like that, but I remember, honest to God, this is the truth. I remember I come from Rochester, I played all my life in the minors, and, and I finally got to coach the Bruins. I'll never forget it. I got out and, and I'm looking and, and I can't, I'm, there's Bobby Orr. And I remember I said to my son when I was in Rochester, I says, well, I'm going to coach the Boston Bruins, Timothy, and he says, are yeah, we going to see Bobby Orr? I says, yeah, and I'm going to see him too. You're my hero, Bobby. Put her there, right there. Greatest hockey player ever. Take the cold blow. Take the cold. Well, Dad, that was a great show. I know you had fun with uh, with uh, Bobby and, and Gump. And, Gump. and uh, that was one of our biggest, uh, the two biggest shows we had for fans was uh, Bob Probert and Dino Cicerelli and, uh, and Bobby and Gump. Like, we had the locked the doors uh, to because there were so many people trying to get in. But I remember Gump. When you want to hear the first thing I said to him? Yeah. Well, Gump, I said, I, we, we started off. <laughs> he was a funny guy. He, I said, uh, what are you doing now? I said, what do you mean doing now? I'm sitting here, intervie you're, you're interviewing me. <laughs> and, and that's... Uh, and it went on from there, and uh, he, he was a funny guy. Yeah, we'll run Gumps one time. We'll, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll you have to, to run Gumps. Because he's pretty funny. But, uh, you know, you were like, when did, what was the first time you saw Bobby? Because I guess, it was, was it coaching, or was it? No, you, what happened was I had made a comeback. Not, not to go into that again, but I, I, I made a comeback, and we were, play, we were playing the Boston Braves that night in the Boston Gardens. And the Bruins were having a, a, a skate. They were flying at 4 o'clock. They were flying to uh, L.A. So we all come down, you know, we went. And, and, and I remember, now I, you have to realize that I had been to, I had played against all the stars. I would played against uh, Gordy. I played, I played them all. I played exhibition games against them. Yeah, and you've been to almost all their training camps. Yeah, I've been to all their training camps except Chicago. I think it was the only one I was at. It sounds bad, but I was, and I played against the exhibition game. So I, I knew what, you know, I, uh, great teams and great guys and everything. And I couldn't believe the first time I saw Orr. He didn't skate. He seemed to float on, uh, on uh, and he was only fooling around. And uh, I remember Tom Johnson was a coach, and he said, what's around? And they went, and they went around the circle. And... They were undisciplined, eh? And uh, 
they should have won more Stanley Cups with that team. That, that was, I mean. Yeah, that's what Bobby said in the interview. He yeah. Said they should have been more disciplined. Yeah. So anyhow, the very first time I met us, so we went down and as a team, we took the bus and, and I walked out and the very first time I saw Bobby, I couldn't believe it. I mean, I mean, I, I was, I, I was like a, I was like a trainer that saw the best horse. And I, I, I just couldn't believe it when I watched him out there. He didn't seem to skate. He was like coffee, eh? If you watch coffee in those older things, he, 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 you, he, how much better he was skater. He, only he went to the outside, and unfortunately for Bobby, and he lasted till he was 30-some years old, but Bobby used to go to the inside. Yeah, you, I remember you, you got me an autograph. Uh, what, who played for us was Rob Walton and... Uh, he and Mike was playing for the Boston Bruins, so brother, I went to that Ro- was his brother Mike Walton. Right? Yeah, Mike Walton, and I went down to the I went down to the pro shop, and I got a big picture of Bobby, and I asked Rob if he'd asked Mike if he'd asked Bob, <laughs> not <that> awful, <laughs> like I was like a teenager, and and I said could he put on uh, keep lifting the weights? You were lifting weights back then. By the way, I still have your, I still have your bench. Oh well, yeah, yeah, I still got. It. But anyhow. Uh, so he did it, and he signed it, and, and and you still have the picture, eh? Oh yeah, I still I have it up, hanging up, and you know what I remember was listening to the game on the radio, and I remember the uh, the the play by play guy said, "Well, Tim Cherry out there, he says your dad got you a very special." Pete gift. Brown, I think it was. Pete Brown was his name. Pete Brown, yeah. He says got you a very special gift, and I I didn't know what it was, and <laughs> yeah. then I got to tell you the truth, like back then I would have been maybe five or six yeah. well it was probably maybe six or seven and uh i didn't we, we I, I were didn't, in the mic. i didn't know who quite who was bobby or because you never saw the games on tv no yeah and uh, i remember playing cards honest to god now that I, we're talking about it i remember playing cards and uh, playing cards in the back and i and I, I and i was all thrilled that i had that picture up above i mean it really was and but i couldn't believe but when the yeah that's the first time i saw bobby or yeah. And um, well, your your brother Richard, he was at training camp with him. He right? was, and a, and a great pitcher in Bobby Orr's book, of uh, and and I think he mentioned, I think it during the show we mentioned uh, that pitcher, yeah. And he he mentioned the guys in it. I didn't know the guys in it, and a uh, great pitcher of Richard, and uh, Richard was uh, was uh, uh, you know. You said you said that uh, he called you and told you about him. He says he says you can't believe this eighteen year old kid. That uh, here he says Bobby Orr. He says you've heard of him. And I said yeah. He says you can't believe how good he is. And he says, but you know what? Somebody's going to get him pretty good because he's so good that he goes by guys and he leaves a leg. And I knew exactly what what he meant. Does leave a leave a leg? Pavel Burry used to do that. Leave a leg and go by the guys, and uh, he got him pretty good. Anyhow, it's a great one of Bobby. And at the start, I can't tell the difference. You have to listen because the um, Gump's voice sounds like Bobby's voice yeah. at the start, yeah. and I and I was a little confused. But anyhow, that's Gump at the start. Oh, yeah. So uh, we like to wish everybody a happy New Year, and uh, we'll wish Team Canada all the best. All the best, and I hope they win. They but hope they, they win. They, but the Russians bother me. Yeah. And uh, again, we just want to uh, thank our sponsors, Spreads.ca, and all the. Hockey- now, what are you betting? You're betting on the. You're betting on Team Canada. Eh? I'm betting on Team Canada. I don't think I, you know, when they play Austria, I think in those teams, I take the, I take, <laughs> I take the goals. But you don't make much money if you bet straight up. But uh, once they get in with us and stuff like that, yeah. They, and you know, the kids up. never jumped around after they, even after they scored the first goal, they didn't jump around, which was good. Yeah. The only thing that I, I got to tell you, the only thing I didn't like was the coach saying it could have been two hundred nothing. I mean, that that wasn't very nice of him saying that. Is that what he said? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That you was, don't. Yeah, yeah. Hockey gods, they always come back and bite you. And I, and over the years, I've been in hockey a long time. It, it might have to wait a little while, but... Um, I, yeah. Oh, just one more thing before we go. Uh, we wish everybody Happy New Year and stuff. But one thing I really found interesting was, unfortunately, their their captain, uh, Kirby Doc, dislocated. or Somebody's a fracture, but I think he oh, dislocated. Yeah. We've, we've, we're missing two pretty good players. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, and Fenye. even... 
the, well, Lafreniere, him, and then the number one uh, consent, not a consensus, but one of the number one picks this year is uh, a kid named Powers, who we saw, a big defenseman. Yeah, I like and, dry, uh, You know and, that guy I and, like is Drysdale, and, and uh, he, uh, he he he's not on, so we're missing some some pretty good guys. But you said that you used to put uh, tape you, on your wrist. Just Kiki for, Mortson, I'm, and people up north will remember the name Kiki Mortson. Used to make fun of me, and I I when I was at the Boston camp. Uh, I used to I do a lot used to do a lot of cross checking, eh? And I used to my wrist used to be, you know, sore all the time. And he says, just take some electric tape. Now it's it's electric tape. It's not shiny stuff. It's not stuff. It's got to give a little. It's the old electric tape that we used to have used to give a little. And all you have to do is there's a band around your wrist, I guess. And I used to put that on both sides. It used to be black all the time. <laughs> and it looked terrible. And Kiki Mortson made fun of it, and uh, you know I always try to be a back belt like your dad or like your brother, and, and all stuff like that. And that we had a pretty good fight over it. But anyhow, I don't think anybody would ever do it now. But when I, I never had it, and I some of it went, it would it would crack, it would split right in two, and I used to think I'd have a, a bad wrist then. That's too bad about that kid. I hope his wrist comes out. But boy, when you get a bad wrist, it takes you a long time. That there's yeah. a little and and you wonder why New York. So yeah, he said yeah. Lafreniere's not going. I mean, yeah, that's well, we of... know that. Remember, we had Pat Jarrett. It was not his name. Yeah, and our our number one draft choice boy, and he brought. And he says, "I heard you got bad news." Oh, I remember the guy we were having practice. He says, "Your number one draft choice," and he was a he was a pretty good kid. He, he reminded yeah. me of Dougie Gilmore. Yeah, yeah, and he uh, broke his ankle, and uh, we were done. And we were. Yeah. But that's okay. Well, I was. I thought he was a little shy at the start, as usual, uh, Bobby. And I thought it was a great interview, and uh, uh, he's still the greatest hockey player who ever lived, and uh, I still uh, talk to him once in a while. And the boy, when I first saw him, he was something. So that was our interview with the great Bobby Orr. <laughs>